So what I will uh, explain now is what um, a typical flexible and scalable embedded security system would look like for any connected device, speci specifically for the IoT. Uh, first, a little bit of introduction on the company I work for. It's Barco Silex, and we uh, provide embedded security IP cores. These can be complete platforms or just standalone IP cores for cryptographic operations. Next to that, we also have uh, IP cores for uh, image and video encoding and transport solutions. And also we provide electronic design services around these IP cores because if um, you want to provide a state-of-the-art IP core, usually you will have to do some type of uh, design service around it to integrate it into a state-of-the-art system. So before I explain what a scalable and flexible uh, embedded security system looks like, I want to take it a step back and talk a little bit about what uh, security actually means, why security is needed, what kind of threats are, that are out there, which will result in a set of requirements for such a flexible uh, and scalable system. The, uh, this question, why do we need security? In the past few years ago, I always had to explain this. Now we have seen so many attacks. You have read all about the WannaCry attack, uh, uh, cars getting hacked. So I think by now it's clear to everybody why we need, we need security. There are many motivations for attacking devices uh, out there. You have privacy violation, you can uh, plan criminal actions, identity theft. You can use uh, a very simple um, baby monitor, for instance, or a security camera. Uh, you can turn it into a source of attack to do a denial of service attack, like has, has been done, I think, around a year ago. And um, for, for instance, in uh, healthcare, in the connected uh, um, uh, healthcare systems, we see that uh, sometimes people plant malware or ransomware uh, um, as a criminal activity. To avoid that, we need to have trust. Trust is the most important thing if you want to have a secure system. Of course, you don't do only want to trust the device itself, but uh, you also want to trust the connection that the device makes. And to be able to trust the device and the connection, you need to be able to also trust um, the firmware of the device, the software of the device, um, the, the people who will be debugging the device. So all these things need to be trusted. So security is not only um, encrypting or decrypting and having some kind of uh, uh, cryptographic operation on, on the data, but you have to do secure the device in, way many more, in many more aspects than just uh, encrypting the data. If you look at the, the, the different layers of a, of a connected device, hardware, software, and then the infrastructure in which it's embedded, you can see I listed just a couple of threats that are existing on each layer. So there are, there are you can have key, key extraction, you can have probing, illegal debugging, side channel attacks, you can try to corrupt the software. There are many threats on each of the layers. And for each and every one of these threats, a specific security feature is required to, to tackle this, this uh, issue. So you can see that the typical encryption, which thinks everybody is, is enough to secure a device, is only one of the features you need to build a secure system. There are many more other features which are required to make a system secure. There is secure storage, secure boot, secure uh, um, um, uh, debugging. You need to have anti-tampering, all these kinds of features. Next to uh, features to uh, eliminate all these different threats. You also have to look at uh, where, in the end, disconnected systems uh, uh, can end up. There is a huge variety of protocols and uh, um, communication uh, uh, stacks that can be implemented in a system because all these systems in the IoT is a huge variety in markets and devices. So you, you need to be able to, s one device needs to be able to support Thread, Zigbee, the uh, low power Bluetooth, and from a protocol point of view, you need to be able to support the uh, uh, IPsec, the TLS, the HomeKit protocols. You need to be able to support all of those. So you need a system which can support all these specific things. So that means you, um, you need a, a system which is flexible and can adapt to whatever uh, market it will be addressing. Another very important aspect is because it needs to be able to support all these markets and devices, um, security needs to be implemented right from the uh, very first architectural study the, the, uh, of the device. It's not something, security is not something you can just add afterwards. It's not something where you say, okay, I have my device now. Oh, yeah, I forgot I need security. Let's just uh, 
added to my design, it needs to be really integrated right from the start. And then, of course, depending on where the device will eventually end up, you will customize or enable certain features um, and dis disable them depending on what kind of threats you will, you will, you, there are to be expected, the architecture of the device, what kind of power performance will be, will be uh, re requested, and, of course, what kind of standards of protocols will be used. So, as an example of what um, such a scalable and flexible solution looks like, um, we have developed an IP core, a, a, a soft IP core, a module which you can basically implement in any FPGA or uh, ASIC solution, which can serve as a hardware root, or, root of trust. It's a scalable and flexible solution which can serve many markets and the devices, and it is a block which can offer secure services to the host using the mailbox. So what is obvious here is that the crypto engine itself, so the, the part which does all the cryptographic operations, so the so um, doing the asymmetric and uh, symmetric operations, it's only part of the system. There are many other blocks which are required, as I explained before, to make a system secure. The root of trust, it's something which is, um, if you have no root of trust, means if you have no secure boot, you can implement as many cryptographic operations as you want, your system will never be secure because there will always be a way of overwriting uh, the boot loader, uh, being able to clone a device or, or load it with malicious software. So what the module like that does, it will boot first, it will uh, decrypt and authenticate its own firmware, it will, bo it will boot up, and then will it also uh, um, decrypt, authenticate the first level bootloader of the host device and uh, give the, a command to the, ho uh, to the host processor saying you're good to go, you can boot yourself. Uh, a module like that is also required to store all the keys that are needed in all the cryptographic operations in a secure way. So um, it is completely separated from the host processor so that all the keys are uh, only remain within this module and can never be accessed by the host processor unless they are encrypted and signed. Um, once the system is up and running, this uh, module can be used by the host processor to uh, generate and store keys in a secure way, to do uh, uh, secure firmware updates, um, to even authenticate the firmware at runtime to make sure that once the system is running that the, the, the host can see or that a connecting device can see that the, the device has not been compromised. Side channel attack protection, so there are uh, differential power attacks, countermeasures get, that can be built in into the crypto engine. And of course it supports uh, all the uh, common uh, cryptographic algorithms which are out there, which are, ne which are needed for the different protocols and, and communication techniques that I showed earlier. There is an anti-tampering uh, mechanism in there, so if somebody tries to um, overheat the device or try to decapsulate the device, there are, there are sensors in there which will uh, make sure that depending on how the configuration of the tamper is, uh, all the, the secrets, all the keys are completely erased or that uh, the tamper can just be locked. Um, secure debugging is very important. This morning, uh, somebody asked the question uh, whether there would be a trade-off between um, having the ability to debug a device and the security of the device. Actually, there, there is no trade-off there. You can make the, the, the debug port of a device completely secure by implementing uh, a chalice response interface, working with certificates, and giving permissions depending on, the, on, the, on who accesses this debug port. So there is no trade-off to be made there if you implement it in a good way. Um, it also implements a DMA to make uh, the, the offloading of the cryptographic, cryptographic operations uh, more, um, more efficient. And of course, there is a power management unit which can, um, for IoT devices, it's very important that you can go into a retention or sleep mode to save power for uh, any IoT device. So this is what a typical uh, um, hardware security module for an IoT device or for any connected device for that matter would look like. So that's, uh, that concludes my talk for you.